Welcome to the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, where business owners, thought leaders, and community champions from across Central Illinois come to share their story. The Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. Anything less would be uncivilized. What's up, Central Illinois? It is Derek Hayden. I'm here with Garrett Omer, we are your hosts for the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, powered by Zambu. Zambu is a delicious grapefruit or wild berry vodka-based spirit infused with the Brazilian buzz button. It's smooth, tasty, and leaves you with a signature tingle. Learn more at ZambuLiquors.com. Zambu, taste the tingle. All right, Central Illinois, let's introduce today's guest. Our, Our guest today attended... Illinois Wesleyan University, where he graduated with a bachelor's in political science. He also attended University of Illinois Springfield for public administration. He is the president and CEO of the Illinois Manufacturers Association. Ladies and gents of Central Illinois, please welcome to the show, Mr. Mark Denzler. How are you doing, Mark? Hey, I'm great, Derek and Garrett. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. No, we're, we're, we're both excited to have you on today, for sure. Yep, we're pumped. You've You've been a name we've been trying to get on the show for a little bit. So we're excited <laughs> to uh, present you to the uh, the Central Illinois world. So um, awesome. Thank you. if you've had a chance to watch, you may pre- be prepared. But if not, um, the next step is we take you through our speed round. So what we'll do is we'll ask uh, Garrett, we'll ask you six questions. Try to answer them as quickly as you can. We always say 60 seconds, yeah, but we know never works. Seconds, yeah, we usually, <laughs> Garrett and I start talking. So we we interrupt our guests sometimes. So, but uh, I'll go ahead and kick it over to Garrett so we can get to know you a little better through our speed round. All right. Perfect. All right, Mark. Are you ready? I am. All right. The first concert that you ever attended. Rat in the Decatur Civic Center back in the 1980s. Yes. <laughs> so now I guess the proper question is, is do we have hair to headbang with back then? <laughs> I, you know, I'm follically challenged. You know, I get that. But uh, yeah, back in the day, there is proof that I did have hair uh, at some point. So I, I rocked it pretty good as a teenager. That's awesome. I hope you don't take offense to that. But as another, as a fellow bald man, I feel like we, I can ask that question. So, yeah. but I would say my, my favorite band is Aria of all time. Okay. There so, we go. I, mean, I like it. Awesome. Your favorite movie. Oh gosh. Um, so my wife makes fun of me because every time Armageddon is on TV, I have to sit and watch it. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but you know, Shawshank Redemption is pretty yep. good. I really like Shawshank. Yeah, that's, that's also one of my favorites. Great movie. And of favorite? Course the, God, the Godfather trilogy, you know, you can't go wrong with that. I oh, yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. Favorite ice cream flavor? Butter pecan. Perfect. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Favorite social media platform? Uh, actually, LinkedIn. Uh, you know, okay. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, but actually, I think I get more value and I like LinkedIn a lot better. Yep, I think that's about the answer, yep. Derek, and I normally have any more, too, is... is, is Facebook is great, but if we want some value out of it, LinkedIn's a good way to go. So, yep. And last but not least, why Central Illinois? So, Central is a great place. I was born and raised in Central Illinois, in Decatur. So, you know, not far from you, as you noted, I went to Illinois Wesleyan. Go Titans! By the way, they are in the Sweet Sixteen and I Division Three basketball. All right, awesome. As we were talking, Illinois lost today, so the best basketball team still playing in tournament right now is Illinois Wesleyan. Go Titans again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we have so many things going for us, you know, in Central Illinois. And we have great companies and we have those Midwestern values and strong work ethic. Um, and just, you know, it, it's a great place to grow up and raise a family. I mean, it's kind of cl- cliche to say that, um, but it really is. There's a lot of opportunities, whether you like the outdoors, you want to go to a concert at ISU or, you know, a show at University of Illinois Springfield or a basketball game in Champaign. There are a lot of things to do here. And, um, so like I said, I'm proud to be born and raised in, uh, in Decatur and school in Bloomington and live in Springfield. So I'm a Central Illinois boy. Yeah. Awesome. Very nice. Yeah. I think Central Illinois gets a bad rap because you say all there is is cornfields and, you know, cows and, <laughs> and uh, there really is. It, it's not far away if you want to do something enjoyable. Um, like you yeah. said, you've got plenty of sports around, um, you know, and, and a lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff that happens here in Central Illinois, which we'll start to talk about some of the cool um, businesses that are in the area. Um, but yeah, I think Illinois and central Illinois in particular gets a bad rap for being cornfields and, and, uh, 
all that stuff, but there's a lot to do. So, um, so Mark, what we'd like to do now is if you, you already gave us a pretty good rundown of where you were raised here in central Illinois. Um, tell us about how you got to where you are now as the president and CEO of the um, Illinois Manufacturers Association. And then from there, tell us a little bit about IMA and what you guys do. Sure. No, I appreciate it again. Thanks for having me on and be able to talk about it. Uh, is that it? Born and raised in Central Illinois, uh, graduated Illinois Wesleyan, um, was, was biology and political science. She had a biology uh, minor in international studies as well. Uh, was going to go to medical school, decided I was going to take a year off before I did that and um, spent a year in Springfield on a legislative internship on Republican staff. I kind of fell in love with it. I deferred, spent a couple of years, decided I was going to go to law school and took the LSAT and then the only manufacturers association called not for me a job. I had been the house liaison or staffer to Governor Edgar's Eikenberry Commission, which was the last major school funding rewrite in the 1990s. And um, so then when the IMA called and offered me a position, I deferred law school and said, I'm not going to do it. And, you know, from that point on, uh, I spent four years as director of government affairs at the only manufacturers association. State Farm Insurance, a small mom and pop insurance company located in Bloomington hired me <laughs> and I helped oversee some of their public affairs uh, department for four years. And then my predecessor left the IMA and, and I came back in 2006 uh, as vice president of government affairs, moved up to become chief operating officer and then was named the CEO in 2019. And uh, just, I, I love working at the IMA and, and as I like to say, American manufacturing has built this country. When you think about what this country is founded on and built, it was manufacturing, mining, and agriculture. And today, um, Illinois manufacturers still employ 560,000 men and women on factory floors. We provide the single largest share of Illinois' gross state product. So manufacturing is alive and well. And you know, I know we'll talk about what happened during the pandemic and the role that manufacturers play, but I like to say manufacturing makes the world a better place every single day. And whether it's the life-saving product they make or the, the sporting equipment or, you know, you name it, the, the cool things that are made across the state of Illinois. And so the IMA actually is the oldest state manufacturing association in the United States. We're founded in 1893. I'm only the seventh CEO in the history, about 130 year history or 18 months older than the National Association of Manufacturers. And today we represent about 4,000 member companies and facilities that range from, you know, the Caterpillar and Boeing and John Deere's of the world down to you know small uh, family-owned manufacturing companies, uh, you have they're scattered all across Central Illinois, as you're aware, and and they all have a critical role in, in our economy. You're, awesome. Yeah, that's that's very cool. And, and you know, I'll be honest when when Garrett and I started this podcast, it, it was I want to say it was for selfish reasons, but um, it was kind of the beginning of the pandemic when we started to jump into it, and it was we were having trouble talking to other business owners. And so we like made this up as a reason to get in front of people who, you know, ha we wanted to hear their story. And then we started interviewing some of these um, business owners and manufacturing facility owners. And, and you don't realize what's right here in our backyard a lot, a lot of times. And a lot of the cool stuff that um, the central Illinois has to offer um, you know, kind of when we first started talking about you, Mark, was we interviewed Andy Shirk from Beer Nuts. Yep. And uh, it was it was just a cool story listening to their family owned um, manufacturing business. Obviously, uh, Beer Nuts is a cool brand name um, that we don't realize is right here in our backyard. Oftentimes, it seems like it's a big, huge you know thing, but it's right here up, you know, up in Bloomington, normal. And uh uh, that's, that was one of the cool things that has come from this podcast is really getting to know some of the people that make, make the things work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so kudos to IMA and you and everybody that, that has a hand in doing that. Um, I, I, I'm sure our listeners understand how, um, how cool it is to see these things grow, but a lot of people don't see how many hands it takes behind the scenes to actually make it work. Yeah. Um, so so that is cool that um, to learn that and get to know you and the other manufacturers in the area. So um, that's a, a pat on the back to you. Okay. Yep. No, I appreciate it. So no. yep. Go ahead, Derek. I was going to say you mentioned five hundred and sixty thousand em employed people through your members. 
Um, so how many manufacturing facilities or manufacturing members are a part of IMA? Yeah, so there are 560,000 men and women that work in manufacturing today uh, directly on, on shop floors. And as I noted, contribute 12% of the gross state product, which is the single largest share. And then manufacturing has the single highest economic multiplier of any sector. So for every job in manufacturing, another 1.6 jobs are created. And for every dollar in economic output, there's an additional dollar 81 created. So manufacturing has this profound kind of ripple impact on our communities. And the average manufacturing uh, job in Illinois pays almost $88,000 a year in wages and benefits. Um, 92% of manufacturing employees have some form of employer provided health care. So, you know, th th these are the middle class jobs that make up our communities across the state. When you work in manufacturing, you have the ability to buy a house, buy a vehicle, go on vacation, send your kid to college. It, it's, it's a lifestyle um, that, that's, again, a good middle class lifestyle. There's nothing wrong with minimum wage jobs. They're important to our economy. And there's a lot of discussions about, you know, the fight for 15 or higher minimum wage. And I sit back and think that, you know, a $15 an hour minimum wage pays $31,000 a year. Manufacturing pays double that. And so we really have to do a better job. And I appreciate coming on and, and talking to you today about manufacturing. I'm passionate about it um, because there are a lot of great career opportunities in manufacturing today, whether you want to work in production or accounting or sales marketing, um, you name it. But these are great middle-class jobs that I don't think people have an appreciation for, number one. And secondly, they don't realize they're in the communities. And third, I think people have this outdated perception of manufacturing is dark, dirty, and dangerous, you know, kind of what it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And today, if you go on a factory floor, I mean, factories today, they are clean and sustainable and diverse and, and automated in, in some cases. And, and so it's completely different than, than what people thought of manufacturing is kind of the belching smokestacks and cogs from years ago. And so that's another really cool part of the job. I love are touring manufacturing facilities to meet the workers who have great pride in what they make, but also the, the cool products that they make. Gotcha. I agree. Yeah. And you, you said right there that um, the perception that people have of manufacturing, um, you know, this is a good opportunity if you're listening to, to understand that there has been huge advancements and updates in manufacturing. And you mentioned it's not just for the people on the floor, you know, hands on with the product. There's so many opportunities within those, within those programs. You, like you said, you got management, you've got sales, you've got um, the finance side. There's, there's a, there's so many opportunities. It's not just manufacturing. It is basically almost any occupation that you are interested in can probably be found in the manufacturing world. Yeah. And, and yep. you asked the question, I, I failed to answer how many firms, there are actually about 18,000 companies in Illinois that, that classify themselves as a manufacturer. And, you know, anything from the Caterpillars that have 20,000 plus employees to one of my favorite members is uh, three guys that hand tie fishing flies basically out of their garage and they sell them. They're a manufacturer. They produce these. And so, again, the scope and depth of manufacturing is, is truly amazing. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you had a question earlier. I'll catch you off. No, I was just going to kind of get into the basics of kind of what IMA is, what it does, benefits that they provide, and just things of that nature. Cool. Sure. So. Yeah, I, I know, go ahead, go ahead, Derek. No, I'll let you go, Mark. You 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 are the star of the show, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give you the floor. Well, thank you. Um, so our, our job, we're the only statewide organization dedicated to manufacturing in Illinois. We have about four thousand member companies and facilities, and our job is really to to advocate, to promote, and strengthen the manufacturing sector in Illinois. And there's a couple of different ways we do it. Number one, advocacy. Uh, we have an award-winning government affairs team, and so we are active at the state capitol in Springfield. We get involved in Washington, D.C. Uh, more and more, we get involved locally, particularly in Chicago and Cook County, where we, we see ordinances that come up that always are, fr are not always friendly to, to businesses or manufacturers. So that's a big chunk of what we're known for. Um, and then secondly, and, and I think more importantly, is we're a source of timely and accurate information. And this was never better demonstrated than during the pandemic. As you know, we had regulations and changes coming out, you know, hourly, um, daily, weekly. 
And, you know, the IMA really, you know, someone described it to me. They said, look, when this happened, some associations ran and others ran into the fire. And they said, we ran into the fire. And we were very pleased to be um, named by the American Society of Association Executives as one of 100 associations saving the world for our work during the pandemic. And it was making sure that companies, and, and talking about what we do, making sure they have accurate and timely information. What do they need to know to run their operation? What's the new tax law change or the new change from OSHA or CDC? Particularly the small and mid-sized companies, I think get more value from us than the larger companies. The larger companies have banks of attorneys and accountants and finance sure. people, but that small and mid-sized company, you know, the owner might also be the plant manager and they're handling payroll and they're wanting to make sure that, that their workers are paid, their widgets go out in time. And so we have the ability to speak with one voice, and that's what the IMA does. We speak with one voice, advocacy, and then providing this information, you know, training, seminars, communications. Um, and, and what we find with members that join the IMA, they, a lot of them join for advocacy. Um, a, a smaller number join for programs and webinars. But then when we pull them and we say, what do you find the most value? It is the programs and seminars. And, and I'll just close by saying, in some ways, we sell blue sky. I'm not selling a car. I'm not selling a suitcase or a type of food, um, you know, like beer nuts. We're, we're selling a service or we're selling a product and, and kind of in blue skies. And um, an average association retention rate is about 88%. The IMA's retention rate is 97%. And so that means when companies get involved with the IMA, they love what we do. They're actively engaged and they stay with us. And we're, we're very, very proud of our legacy our rich heritage, and, and we look forward to, you know, the next number of decades representing manufacturers. That's awesome. Very good. So you mentioned um, the pandemic a little bit when you started, um, you know, that, that last piece. So uh, with 560,000 employee lives affected, you know, within the manufacturing facilities that you represent, what were some of the hurdles and solutions that you helped provide during the pandemic with that being obviously one of the biggest issues in our lifetime? Yeah, I mean, it's the greatest economic health and health, health crisis that we've had in generations. And um, what the manufacturing sector really did, I mean, FDR during World War II called manufacturers the arsenal of democracy, as we know. And manufacturers played that same role uh, during the pandemic. Um, I had a call from the governor's office. I was asked to, to co-chair his equipment task force very early in the pandemic. I remember the kind of one of the first calls we got, we need to find 2 million meals ready to eat to help senior citizens and kids. Or at one point, you know, chills down my spine, we need refrigerated trucks or we need ventilators. But the manufacturers, so I, with my friend, John Conrad at iBio, we, we were co-chairs of the Governor's Equipment Task Force. Um, we quickly set up a, an eight-person steering committee, a single intake. Um, ultimately, we had a thousand, more than a thousand companies sign up and raise their hand and say, what can I do? And whether it was companies increasing production of toilet paper, of food, you name it, those essential products, or companies completely retooling facilities. Diageo, the liquor manufacturer, started making sanitizer. We had companies that make American flags and clothing started making masks and gowns. John Deere, uh, we did a partnership with John Deere and the United Auto Workers in, in the Quad Cities started making masks that were donated to dozens of veterans homes across the United States and then provided tens of thousands in Illinois. And so manufacturers really stepped up. AbbVie, uh, Illinois largest biopharmaceutical company in Lake County had never made something called VTM, viral transport medium that was used in testing. Um, so sophisticated, literally within weeks, they started producing VTM and providing it to the state of Illinois. Um, the experts at, at University of Illinois and SHIELD and, and the saliva test that is used. And so you saw all this amazing ingenuity and innovation um, to really make sure that we continue providing products that people and businesses need. And then from the IMA, I think one of the most important things we did, and um, I, I personally, I don't think we get enough credit or people don't realize we wrote the definition for essential manufacturing that the governor included in his executive order to keep manufacturing up and operating during the pandemic. Our language that we provided actually was used in a dozen states around the country, and it kind of became the gold standard. We made sure that, that manufacturers could operate, but also their supply chains. And again, to make sure that we had food, safe and nutritious food on store shelves, to make sure that we had PPE, 
um, to make sure our, our great biopharmaceutical companies could make the life-saving products that people relied on. And when you think about today, we're on Zoom. You know, the telecommunications equipment, um, if you think you didn't have, you know, the cell phones that manufacturers had and computers, you know, how schools would function, how businesses would function. And, and so it, it really was amazing, you know, what manufacturers did and stepped up to say, how can I help? Um, and, and then, you had know, smaller issues, um, like I said, the definition of essential manufacturing, but, you know, one of the others, we increased truck weight limits. So, you know, Illinois had a law that you could, you could transport 80,000 pounds on a truck. We got that increased during the pandemic. So you could transport more product more efficiently and quicker. Uh, most people don't realize that most cities or a lot of cities have ordinances that you can't deliver product between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. because they don't want truck idling and noise or emissions. Well, when we're trying to get product on the shelves, particularly food, PPE, we worked with individual cities to make sure that, hey, if a truck shows up at 8 o'clock at night, you're not going to keep them there until seven in the morning, let them unload and get moving again. And so those are some of the smaller changes that we worked with that go under the radar screen that nobody really notices when that truck is dropping off product, but things that made sure that our supply chains worked efficiently as possible. That's incredible. It is. I was just getting ready to say, I can't imagine at the beginning that you got much sleep. <laughs> I, I didn't. Um, it's interesting. I, I, I never left the office. Uh, I was in every single day, um, you know, five, six, seven a.m. until often seven, eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night. I remember the day the governor issued the executive order, um, the stay at home order. Um, we had hundreds and hundreds of phone calls from members, from non members, calling, stayed in the office literally until 2 a.m., responding to every email that came in, letting them know what that meant. And one of the things I'm most proud of is, is we're known for our communications and advocacy that are, that are limited to member companies. We made the decision, we're going to open that up for anybody. Uh, we thought it was important enough that every company, whether you're a manufacturer or you're a business, and you need to know what this means, join our call. And so we had tens of thousands of, of uh, individuals and business owners that got on our call. It was actually a series of YMCAs around the state got on one and they said, or one YMCA got on and said, hey, do you mind if we have all the Y? So we had like 27 YMCAs. Every time we had a call, get on to figure out what the new regulations were and worked with our partners, you know, the McLean County EEC or Bloomington Chamber of Commerce or Decatur Chamber of Commerce. Um, we opened up all of our programming and said, you know, share this with your members. We're here to share information. At this point, it, it's all hands on deck. And it's not, hey, we're only going to provide it to IMA members or only to manufacturers. Our role during the pandemic was to say, listen, we're, we're here to help everybody. And, and I think we got some very nice notes back. And, you know, we're, we're very proud of what the manufacturing sector did. I'm proud of the IMA and our team. We have a fantastic team. And like I said, hopefully there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel and, and we get past this and we continue to, to rebuild and, and keep growing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So essentially, whenever the world shut down, you know, that not everybody was shut down. It was, there were still people, thanks to the IMA behind the yeah. scenes that were working to make sure that we had everything essential to, to continue our lives. So yeah, thanks. Thanks on behalf of uh, our listeners in, uh, in central Illinois for, for sure for, for doing that. Many and business I, owners, no whether idea. manufacturing or not, like you said, were just in awe. I don't want to say in awe, but I can, Derek and I were actually out on some business meetings the day before the state got shut down. And we're in the, was in the office with a, and had a, a client on a phone call when it was going on and the individual could hardly talk to us. He's like, you know what? Now is just not the time. He, we need to move this discussion. He says, they're shutting everything down as we speak. And uh, it's one of those things that you'll remember forever, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. Hopefully we don't have to see it again in our lifetime. And as I've told people, it was the most humbling, rewarding, challenging all at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, and I never slept with my phone by my bed until that started happening because I'm getting calls at all hours of the day and night. And um, again, as, as I think the governor said and others, we're really trying to build the airplane while we were flying it. And, uh, you know, again, hopefully something we never have to deal with again. But um, surely what, what manufacturers did, and, and, and I'll say it too, I mean, vaccines, the, the creation of the fastest vaccine in history, safe vaccines. Um, went through the FDA process, but, you know, the technology that's out there, um, you know, again, that, that's leading our nation and the world forward. I, I couldn't be more proud of, of American manufacturing. Yep. Very good. So our listeners are on the edge of their seat. 
they can see your background if they're watching on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but actually the, the reason for the timing of interviewing you, Mark, is to learn more about Maker's Madness. You're going to have to tell us what is Maker's Madness? How'd you come up with it? Give us the entire rundown here. This is one of my favorite times of the year. Maker's Madness, the coolest thing made in Illinois, presented by Comcast Business, as you can see over my shoulder. So this is the third year of our fun online contest to determine what is the coolest thing made in Illinois. What do voters around the state think is the coolest thing made here? And we had the idea to, to really showcase these great products. And again, as we talked earlier, a lot of people don't know what's made here. Um, you know, if you ask someone, hey, where do you get your food? And they said grocery store or, you know, where do you get your computer of the, you know, the electronics store? they don't realize they're made here. And so um, we came up with the idea to have this contest and we started, this is the third year. Anybody can nominate a product. So nominations will be taken until March 20th at makersmadnessil.com. Uh, you can nominate a product as long as it's made in Illinois, it doesn't matter how big or how small it is, uh, as long as the product is made in Illinois. Um, the first year we had 160 plus unique products last year, 262 products, I believe. Um, the first year, almost 300,000 votes last year, over 300,000 votes. So we'll get it down, uh, the number of, of products made, we'll get it down to 16 and then we'll do that bracketed style head to head competition. Uh, we'll get down from 16 to eight to four. And then, uh, we don't go to two, we go from four down to one. So when you have the last four products, people can vote. And then we will crown the coolest thing made in Illinois on April 27th. Now, when you talk about big and small, so the first year, Caterpillar's 797F large mining truck made in Decatur, my hometown, one, I had nothing to do with it. Um, but th this amazing vehicle stands like 23 feet tall. It's, it's the size of a two-story house, um, 13 foot tires, and it won. And I think I think Beer Nuts might have been in the final four that year. Wall Clipper, um, some neat things. Last year, it was something called from Termico Technologies in Elk Grove Village called the self-regulating traffic signal heater. So these were engineers up there that figured out traffic signals now use LED lighting. Uh, they don't generate as much heat. So snow and ice were building up. So they came up with this idea to put... Um, these uh, these regulators on that they sense when there's snow and ice, they turn on, they melt the snow and ice. So again, energy efficiency, but a small product. And so this year, when you think about, you know, what's made and particularly in your backyard, you've got the Rivian, you know, you've yeah. got the, the R1S and the R1C, you've got beer nuts and all the great things that they make. But around the state, you know, you have iconic products, you have Caterpillar Bulldoze, or you have the John Deere uh, you know, combine, red solo cups, White House China, um, Shut Sports makes NFL helmets, and Dinger Bats makes baseball bats that are used in the professional leagues. You know, kind of those big products, but people may not know some of the smaller um, uh, Forest City Gears, for example, in Roscoe outside Rockford. They make gears that are on all the Mars rovers. So the Mars rover that's tooling around right now and on the Red Planet, those gears are made in Illinois. Um, uh, you look over in, in, in Champaign and they make, you know, flight simulators at Frasca. So for really to showcase these products. So again, you know, we encourage your listeners and you guys go to makersmadnessio.com, nominate your product, and then the nominations end March 20th. And then we start voting. And so for the first round, you can vote five times a day. We're Illinois, vote early and vote often. Um, you can vote in the first round five times. You can vote five times for one product. You can split that among one vote for five products. But then once we get to the final 16, they are head to head and you can vote once in each competition. And then, like I said, we will crown the champion on uh, on April 27th. And we look forward to seeing what people think is the coolest thing made in Illinois. That's awesome. Yep. That's a very cool um, way to showcase all the all the things that are going on in Illinois. That's when I whenever we were talking to, to Andy over Beer Nuts, um, I'd never heard of it. And that was the I think he was in the first year and I started researching. I was like wow, this is pretty cool, you know, and some of the, just going back through the IMA website and seeing some of the, the products that were on that list of 64, then down to the, you know, the finals, I was like, man, I had no idea that that was even around Illinois. Well, and there's a little strategy, you know, so Andy and the Beer Nuts team, um, you know, I think the first year they, they focused on one and, and they, they were one of the, the, the last four, last eight, 
you know, but I think last year they might've had three or four products in. So some companies may want to just focus on one product. Maybe they want to enter multiple products. And so there's a little bit of strategy, but what we really find are the products, um, obviously people like their own favorite product, whether it's your favorite alcohol or beer, or your favorite food or component part, whatever it may be. Um, but really the, the companies and the communities that really push their product is really where we see the success in um, the first year, as I think about, there was a product called Therahan produced by two ladies in Elmhurst, worked with the U of I Makers Lab, and they worked with, with young people who had like cerebral palsy and MS that couldn't hold a fork or a pencil. They made products that attach to the hand of a child to allow them to hold a pencil or a, or a fork or a spoon. Um, and they worked with Muscular Dystrophy Association and Easter Seals of Kane and DuPage County to really push it out. Um, I joke with with my friends at Caterpillar, I think the, the the round of 16, their first year, they were going up against Plockman's Mustard in Kankakee. <laughs> and um, it was, and Caterpillar barely beat Mustard in the first round, yeah. but you had Kankakee and their whole EDC and chamber pushing their product. And so that's what's really great is, is to see local communities, you know, and radio hosts, podcast hosts, chambers of commerce really get behind their product. Seeing legislators on the floor of the house say, well, hey, my product's better than your product. And so that's what's really fun, particularly when you get down to that round of 16 and you see the head to head matchups and you kind of see the community against community going on. It really is a lot of fun. Gotcha. That is very nothing cool. nothing is. better than getting some competitive juices flowing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I, I kind of intentionally to, to help Andy a little bit posted that little clip of him talking about their experience in the, the opening. Um, I guess it was the first year that the, the Maker's Madness had, had happened. And so I kind of intentionally tried to help them out to uh, I put that video out like the day before I think nominations went live. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm always pulling for beer nuts, not yeah. only because they were on the podcast, but because I'm a big fan of beer nuts. But uh... <laughs> I have to, and, and, and all the, the 16 finals, they all get a huge banner they can put in their in their facilities. Um, we highlight the winner in a magazine, but especially for those top 16 companies or products, you know, we want to recognize them and the men and women that are making those products because those people are so proud of what they do every day. And, and so again, to ship them a big banner that they can hang in their factory and say, look, I, I helped produce one of the coolest things made in the state of Illinois. And it really is a, a sense of pride or source of pride for those workers. Definitely. That is, yep. That is cool. Well, Mark, we're getting close to time here. Um, is there any, anything that you want to leave our listeners with about IMA or maybe any future initiatives that you want to talk about? Sure. Well, again, thanks guys for having me on. I, I really uh, appreciate it greatly. I'm so proud of the manufacturing sector, uh, whether they're the large iconic companies or the small suppliers that really, you know, not only do they provide good jobs and they provide tax dollars, but they donate philanthropically and they serve on boards and, and they're really, you know, a vital part of the community. And for any manufacturer that's listening, if you're not part of the IMA, I'll give the shameless plug. Please give me a call or visit ima-net.org. We'd love to have you be part of the organization. We're all better when we speak with one voice. And, and also for all your listeners, nominate your favorite product and vote, vote, vote. Again, vote early, vote often. Help us determine what you think the coolest product made in Illinois is. Um, and, and again, um, we're trying to do a great job. We have uh, a Makers Wanted campaign to showcase manufacturing careers. We do a lot in education workforce development. Um, with young kids, manufacturing month is October, so you're going to see a lot out of us and, and maybe a little bit of a road show, kind of a college game day type format. Give me a little hint there. Cool. cool. And so going around the state to really showcase just what's made and, and how proud we are of, of great American and great Illinois manufacturers. And so, again, makersmadnessil.com or uh, if you want to get involved with the IMA, um, ima-net.org or give me a call. I appreciate it. Very cool. And if they want to speak to you, Mark, where can they uh, reach you at? Sure. My, my number directly, 217-522-1240. Uh, or my email, mdensler, D-E-N-Z-L-E-R, at ima-net.org. So you can look me up. You can find me online and all these different social media channels. So again, follow us, follow you guys. Again, thank you for highlighting Central Illinois businesses. You're equally as proud uh, as I am of what companies do in central Illinois. So thank you for what you guys do. Thank you for showcasing great businesses and, and people around the community. So keep on doing what you're doing as well. 
Well, awesome. We appreciate that. We, 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 we definitely we, will. Yeah, um, we appreciate your time. Yes, and you listeners out there, make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast on whatever platform you consume podcasts on. Also, while you're there, please leave us a review. You can also follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook and engage with our guests there as well. Until next time, make sure you're nominating your favorite manufacturers at makersmadnessil.com. And Mark, you have officially been civilized. Thanks for coming on the show. Awesome. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash C-I-B-L podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do.